Um, and then we think that that is happening to us. Uh, and it could be, be in vertical commas because of the posture or because my, that's the body, my body works. Uh, when we practice yoga, we get a chance to immerse our awareness, uh, immerse not our thinking, our, our presence um, within the body. We, we, we enter what the body is saying to us rather than making the body do an exercise like swimming, walking, running. Rather than making the body do an exercise like making a shape and then getting strong at doing that, um, the point of a yoga posture, the point of asana, is to find freedom, ease, freedom and ease in what we are doing. It's still, it's about function, um, but it's about doing simple things. And then if those simple things are hard, it's because of the way we're doing them. So, so we, we learn to refine relationships. And that's a bell to remind me to not over talk. So. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're looking to refine relationships, and this and Feeney's question is um, is uh, really cool. It's um, how do we find the ground through our feet, well, um, and and find space, and there therein lies um, the first two of my lines of inquiry. Uh, how can we feel supported, which is the first direction of inquiry as we practice? You know, what's the quality of our support? Because uh, this is missed. Um, we are supported by what we do. We, we are supported. Um, is the sound working? Is the sound not working? Let me just check. Thank you, Abigail. Um, let me just check. Uh, I'll go onto my Facebook to see if I'm here. Uh, join, let's see. Okay. Uh, 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 Feeney, is anyone else he hearing me? Oh, it's working. Okay, thank you. Have a go. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> good. Um, hi, Ken. Hi, Kat. Nice to see you. Yeah, excellent. Thank you for joining me. Good. Okay, great. So back to topic. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yes. Uh, what are we doing in our practice? Um, we're trying to refine relationships between parts of ourselves. And the way, the way hi, hi, Kat. Uh, the way we do that rather than working out how we are doing things by the uh, contractions and somatic experience of tension and releases of tension. It's a very confusing way of, of working out how to do things. Um, what we need to do is to take our attention to what we are doing, um, as in how we are touching the ground, how we are supporting ourselves. And this is the thing I was, I was gonna say was, is being missed, is we think our bodies support us but it's what we do that supports us. It's how we respond. It's our responses. And yes, it would be great uh, to um, arrive in a place where um, everything that we're doing is supported um, freely, without difficulty. Um, but you won't get that by simply repeating the way you do things already. Because the, uh, if there's any reason for doing yoga, it's not to get strong at doing difficult things. It's to find the ease within the things that seem to be difficult so that they no longer are. Yes, I, I, think, that's, um, I think that's a simple and clear way of putting it, I think, I hope. <laughs> Uh, anyway, drop drop your comments if um, you have anything to say or anything to add, and I'll get on with the question. So let's jump right in. Um, yes, how do I... F uh, so what, what is it again? Let's have a look. Uh, uh, groins and ground. How, how do we find the ground? Well, the ground's underneath you, Feeney. <laughs> uh, it might be, seem f facetious, but that's where, you look, that's where you look for it. And if you want to look for the ground underneath your feet... Then you, how do you do that? Um, you do that with your feet. You use your feet. If you want to find support from the ground underneath the feet, you use your touch. Okay. 
Um, and the second part of the question was, and simultaneously make space through the joints. And uh, specifically, I think you're looking to organize the pelvis and head well so that you feel supported in space. So how do we make space in our joints um, as we use the, our touch? Okay, good question. Let's see. So if I can go onto the mat where you can see the whole of me. Is that good enough? A bit, a bit higher up would be good. So, <clears throat> that'll do it. <sighs> so the, uh, hmm, what's the answer? Well, if you find your bones is the answer. You find support through your bones. Um, oh, I'll come back to the camera so you can so I can describe something. Um, so here's uh, here's my foot. <laughs> now, when when people are talking about their bodies, they're usually talking about the muscles. So so when they you know they they stretch a leg, they pull on muscles to to try and um, get more range of movement or something. Uh, when people are feeling wanting to support themselves, they they push with muscular effort, and so they identify with the muscles that are doing the support. Um, all muscles can do is contract, uh, or and not contract and let go. Okay, um, if what you want is support from your foot, try not to think of of it in terms of support from the efforts. That my that um, my leg, my foot can involve can can engage with. Think of it in terms of bones. How how do I find support um, through my bones? And if, if if for example I was interested in how the uh, the heel supports me. Okay. So the the heel is a is a loose bone that's sort of um, on the back of the foot. This is the foot. This part here. The from the toes through to the ball of the foot, from the um, yes, uh, through through the this part, inner and outer foot. The heel is for sort of resting on. And if if I was a if I was a quadruped, that would be the hind leg. Okay, that would be the hind leg. If that makes sense. Uh, and this would be my foot, my paw. Okay. So uh, if we're looking for support from the foot, um, I would start really with. Um, so I'm reversing um, my idea. Uh, we'll start. I would start with the touch of the foot here to see how the bones would support me. Okay. So when when I'm touching, when I'm when I'm touching with my foot, as opposed to when I'm trying to collapse a foot and and push against it, which is a different thing. That's that's not being supported by the foot. That's um, um, yes, something different. When I'm touching with my foot, I'm looking for lines of support through bones so that the muscles uh, are less needed um, to push against or pull with. That makes sense. Okay. I'm looking for structural support. I'm looking for structural support from the, oh, it's difficult to get this on camera. Structural support, not from the efforts of the muscles around the joints, which makes me stiff, but from the bones. So there's the ball of the foot there. Okay. Thank you, Jane. There's the ball of the foot there. Um, there's an ankle. Okay. It's kind of good if you relate the ball of the foot to the outer ankle, because that's how the foot touches. Okay. Don't worry about it too much. You've got an ankle, inner and outer, okay. And the ball of the foot is there. And when you use the ball of the foot for support, which you do when you when you walk, unless you unless you have floppy feet, yeah, um, then the touch of the ball of the foot supports up through the two bones of the legs, of the leg, into the knee joint. So the knee joint doesn't have to um, stress the the muscles here. Don't have to brace and push you know it's about finding support through the joints if you get support through the joints then 
the musculature around it won't be busy trying to squish the joints. Okay, so if you push against your heel, if you push your heel away from you to try and kick for support, what you do is you put you, you pull on these muscles, and then the muscles are responsible for for doing the work of moving you. You see, it's hard work. Whereas if you have a relationship to your support through that where the forces travel through the bones, then the muscles on the surface just have the job of moving a weight, not trying to um, push your weight away from the ground or pull your weight off the ground. It's, so it's hard work. Um, and the job is to find lines of support that leave the muscles around the joint kind of free to articulate. If that makes any sense. So, um, so the way to find space is um, to not push against your joints. It's quite simple. So, and that includes the pelvis, it includes the head. So, let's get going before I run out of time. So, it's in standing, was it, Feeney? I think yes. Good. If there's any other questions, do do add them. If I if I don't get it to it this time, I'll get a you know give me something to talk about next time. So. Let's see. So I, I like to make it about uh, function. So if it's in standing, um, if it's in standing, I want to learn how to stand on a foot. So um, putting the foot down involves the heel going down, the little toe edge going down, and the ball of the foot going down. That, that's that's what happens in walking, unless you plonk your weight on your foot and then let the weight of the body fall forwards over a collapsed foot, okay? Um, so if you get involved with the touch directly through your bones, you, you feel it. You, I mean, how do you find support? How, how, do you, how do you find support through a structure? You give your weight through the structure and then you allow a response you allow a response that gives you support through the structure. You know? how, how do I know? How do I know whether I'm supported through this point of contact here? You know, how do I know whether I get support at this place? Well, this is a joint, okay? So how do I know? Well, I give my weight through that place to where I touch, and my response doesn't brace against. Uh, uh, my movement going this way. It doesn't brace against my movement going that way. It doesn't brace against my movement pulling back this way. It travels through. If I can do that through a stick, um, I can do that through my bones. It's just taking your attention to what is it that actually supports me. So, um, Yes, if you're walking, you'll put the heel down first, followed by the little toe, followed by the ball of the foot. Okay, That's how you walk. And then when you're on the ball of the foot, the leg is behind you. So that's probably quite a good place to start. So have the sense of the ball of the foot touching the ground. So I'm not, I'm not talking about just being forwards with a collapsed ankle. Because if you are, you'll feel the knee and pulling up, the thighs being tense, that sort of thing. I want you to feel supported by the ball of the foot as you travel forward. So you need to be on it, which involves waking up the ankle, it involves lifting the outer side of the foot, it involves spreading the toes. And then when that action of touch is there behind you, you'll feel muscles, which is uh, not wrong. But what we're looking for is how to feel supported through the hip. Okay. So if it's to do with the pelvis and the groin, uh, you need to be interested in where the bones of the leg are. You need to be interested in where the pelvis is. And for you to feel space and support, you need to be able to release this relationship between the pelvis and the rest of you. Everything from the pelvis up and everything from the thigh bone down. There's a relationship in between those things that is the space that you're talking about. Um, if you put weight against that 
space, you'll feel the tension. If you pull the weight away from that space, you'll feel the tension. So what we need is a relationship in space from the pelvis up and a relationship to touch from the thigh bone down to the ball of the foot. It's a pronation of the foot. It's a inward rotation a little bit of the thigh and a lifting of the toe and outer ankle. Then between those things, the downward touch and the upward space can give you a position in space relative to your touch that allows the hip to be free. And how do you feel that? Well, if you know where the hip joint is, it's kind of useful. It's, it, uh, it's the thigh bone comes up and then it travels in at an angle and it sort of points in towards where the, uh, just outside of the sit bone and up. Um, so the hip joints are kind of lower down than we think. We think of them as the muscles, it's not. That's, a, that's meant to be a space. So if you can organize support through the ball of the foot so that this feels like a space, and it doesn't really matter what you do to find that, then you can breathe in this space. There's a sense of the breath arriving in this space, and that's how you tell when you've released tension. Um, and then, and, and you can do that because you're supported by the touch. Then with the, if you can get the breath in this relationship, the feeling of the breath, obviously there's no air, it's pressure. So you have to create that condition. Um, it's it's front and it's back. So you know if you if you've got a problematic um, a spine that's holding on for dear life, then you need to allow the breath in the back of you more. If you've got a problematic hip flexor that tries to push the pelvis forwards, then uh, you need to relax that and allow the breath in the front a bit. So between your hands, and I suggest you put your hands. Um, across the pelvis on that side, whilst you engage with touching with the foot, see if you can get the breath to occupy this space because you are supported by the ball of the foot. If you can get the breath to occupy this space concentrically, so it fills the back as, it, as much as it does the front, it fills from side to side as well, then if you remain supported by your touch as you release the breath within this space, then there's a gathering in, there's an emptying. And that gathering in and emptying allows you to feel more supported by the heel. There's a sense of a being able to drop round through to the little toe side without picking up from the ball of the foot, round to the little toe side and then away from you in the heel. So the hip has opened up, There's the space that we're dealing with has opened up and you're left with a p potential to rest your weight through the back heel there as opposed to hold your weight with the hip. Rest your weight through the back heel there because you've got an active foot, big toe, little toe, back to the heel. You'll feel all sorts of sensations around the structure, but look for giving your weight through to the structure. And if you can do that, then this continues to breathe, even though the heel's on the ground, even though the weight is going through this joint here continues to breathe and as you release the breath through to your support then through your hips from your support you're supported in space so you can get a sense of I, I would get involved with the front foot as well if we're doing it looks like we're doing warrior pose so uh, big toe little toe heel same same deal so you're supported back from the foot supported back from the use of the foot and if you can get the breath into this space, back and front equally, side to side equally, that involves a release of tension around the usual holding places in the hips, in the groins. Um, you have to create the support for that to happen. Then with the release of the breath, something changes above the hips in the breathing. And it'll be a core responsiveness might feel like core strength if you're not used to it. 
but it's a core responsiveness to being on your feet. So landing on your feet creates this gathering. The gathering creates the space between you and your legs. If that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, try it anyway. Try trusting your feet to breathe in this area. So you have to let go of some of the tension. And as you release the breath, try releasing it towards the center of this place. Rather than tilting and tucking and pushing, try and organize the breath so it releases to the center of this place. And then the use of the feet supports that core movement. And the core movement is essentially a response to releasing the breath. And when the release of the breath takes the weight out of the body, away from the hips, whilst the legs are, the feet, the ankles, are supporting you through the joints, through the axis of the joints, inner and outer, and resting the weight back and down through the heels, then that two-way relationship between legs and body will give you a different relationship through the hip space as you ground and breathe into what you're doing, into the space you occupy as well as this area, as you ground and release the breath into the movement. Um, you, you know when you've got something useful happening because the, the spine tends to um, feel both stronger and lighter. Uh, and usually there's a response um, in the breathing behind the heart. The upper spine tends to open up so that the heart is more present and the opening of the heart is more involved in um, both your touch and your, your support and where you are in space. Use the feet supports core movement, which is a result of releasing breath. Yes, perfect. Yes, good. <laughs> uh, Ross Stixon, do you need to be interested? Yes, indeed. You really do. Um, you really got to fall in love with the body. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing that has been, that was developing for, for millennia before we knew anything about it and, and developing all these amazing, incredible uh, functionality that's really intensely complicated. So when the mind comes along, when the thinking comes along, when the awareness comes along, the best you can do is immerse in the experience and observe, use your intelligence to observe outcome. And then the yoga will arise. And, and this is the basic principle of yoga. You, you simply need to turn up in this present moment and the thing happens. Um, but yes, you need to be interested. Very good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, how do you get interested? Um, well, I think, I think results help. So if, 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 in, if you found some benefit in this... Um, Playing, working with the body, yes, with postures. It turned out to be warrior pose. I wasn't intending to do that. It's just what happened. Um, if you work with um, relationships to the earth, to the space that you occupy, and realize that the body's relationships to itself are a function of those engagements, then you can get to explore the nature of your own somatic experience of life through the way you engage with it. Now, if that's not interesting, I don't know what is. <laughs> Maybe you haven't got the time, I don't know. But um, for me, this is a deeply um, fascinating subject. Uh, I was, you know, I was de very confused about life until I discovered that I could unravel some of its secrets some of the way that life and nature operate by listening to the life and the nature that it is operating within me and uh, taking responsi responsibility, realizing that my actions are 
responses based on who I am gave me a freedom to explore other possibilities. So um, yes, that that um, makes it very interesting for me. <laughs> so you know, what is your interest? It doesn't really matter. Uh, but if you if you approach your yoga with this sort of investigative kind of uh, way, then whatever you are interested can be explored directly with these bones and this flesh and this space and this breath and this touch. I th I think that's a wonderful thing, a wonderful gift that we have. So um, yes, hope hopefully uh, you got some benefit out of that. Um, if you did. Please share, uh, share it all around Facebook. I'm on this mission to spread this approach um, throughout the yoga world. It, it makes sense to me. It just seems like common sense to deal with it this way. Um, so if you would like, if, if, if you think there's anyone out there that would benefit from this live, then please do share it. Any group, doesn't really matter. Um, if, if you get to, uh, if it helps one person, then... Um, You've done me a big favor. So thank you. Uh, I am Mark Jayakoviva. Oh, I forgot to um, <laughs> about to do my sign off and I forgot to tell you what, what, what we're doing. We've got workshops coming up. I've got something in Red Hill this weekend. Um, a workshop in Red Hill. Please uh, do sign up. I think there's a couple of places left. It's a very intimate group. To, there's a morning one and an afternoon one. You can do both. Uh, on the, on the um, Sunday, I'm in Twickenham. Um, at Tuesday McNeil's place. I'm also doing a, a, a yoga retreat with her in July in Turkey. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a holiday retreat, so you get to do a bit of yoga in the morning and then in the afternoon we do some Q&A and go deep into things you want to unravel. There's a day off for uh, boat trips and things. Very nice. Uh, I've got yoga in the garden coming up uh, at the end of July, beginning of August. Uh, this lovely garden here, so... Anyway, things happening. Oh, yeah, and uh, on the Sunday, also, Abigail Peck. Uh, work with her, if you can. She's doing a women-only workshop in, in um, London, in uh, at Stretch Ada Street. Um, it's uh, It'll be paradigm shifting for you. If, uh, you need to be, uh, and the, the, the qualification for attending is being, being a woman and having a pelvis. <laughs> and um, you'll get amazing things out of it. Okay, that's me. I've got to get off to my um, my uh, dentist appointment. So uh, thank you for coming. I I'm glad it was helpful, uh, Feeney. Thank you so much. And like I said, do share uh, this around if you can. Um, I am Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. Um, do follow me live. Uh, I do this every Tuesday, 10.30. I'm thinking of doing more because um, I enjoy it so much. And um, yes. I'll see you the next time. Namaste. <laughs>